Here we go. Welcome to the BFME 1 online battle arena for the patch 2.22. This time on the map Forts of Isen, we are against Mordor. Everything is random by the way. Round one. So, Fight. And hopefully we're gonna be playing some games. I'm very sick. So I'm also hoping for some sick performance, okay? So opening for Uruk in the furnace, capture this lumber mill and go down. Down, down to Goblin Town. Get some workers and send them to the second settlement, right at the top. And two more, maybe three more. Give me the money. Nice, okay. Alright. So I think that's a pretty good matchup for Isengard. Uh, Mordor is stronger on bigger maps. I think Forts of Isen is not, you know, a huge map. So we should be able to shut down Mordor. And that's what... You know, what we should be doing also in this matchup. We don't want to give Mordor too much time, you know, because lead game Mordor with like three, four orc pits is not really fun to play against. Okay, he's fighting me. That's good for me. And there is no way he can win this. And I don't need to even use Warchant. We can use Warchant on this Uruks if you want to fight this. Boom. So Uruks with Warchant can actually kill two, three orcs by themselves, you know? I is not as strong as the Warchant. I'm so rusty, dude. I haven't, I haven't touched this game for a long time, you know? I'm not making it to my PC. I'm sick non-stop, actually, during the winter. I was planning to stream more often on Twitch and to make more videos on the YouTube channel from my gameplay. But I was pretty much sick non-stop, you know? Okay, ne with the next war chant, um, that's what I like to do myself, is I like to group all my Urks and go for a massive war chant. So in which you can war chant like three, four Urk battalions, and then we can get so much stuff done, you know? The first war chant, you need to destroy the lumber mill, or the Urk pit, I mean the Orc pit, but with the second war chant, you want to deal as much damage as humanly or urukly possible. For that reason, we don't want to take a fight in which you will lose the uruks for no reason. But remember, we have the faster swordman, so we can always disengage when we want to. And also, what's your goal in this matchup is to keep the fight on his side of the map. So he needs to deal with the uruks. He shouldn't have time to send the orcs to my side of the map. Because I want my lumber mills and slaughterhouses to be protected, you know? And for that reason, most of the time, offense is the best defense. So look how many Urks we have now. Now we can get some Berserkers upon the field. Berserker is able to 1v1 our Orc Battalion, no problemo. And now we're gonna be grouping for a massive war chant. Berserker can deal with this. So now we will have like crazy amount of Uruks, you know. Four, five battalions actually. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. We can now deal so much damage. Like that's the ideal situation right there. Because even if he has like two towers or something, they won't be really doing too much against us. Come on. Come on, man. Nice, okay, switch to formation and go in, boys. The last march of the Uruks begin. So here we want to split them up a little bit, you know. So two go there, two go there. He has three, three Uruk pits, I mean Orc pits. And you see, his eco is not that good though. I mean, I like the Orc pits, but I think you need to also make sure that your eco is kind of good. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I mean, you will improve, dude. You will improve. Just keep playing, you know? The honor was on my side, my friend. I mean, guys, the online arena is pretty active. And the matchmaking is quite fair, too. 
Uh, I haven't played for a long time. That's my that's why my rank is pretty low. So I will get matched up with not very high. GG, my friend. You know, with like high rank players. But you can eventually find people around your own skill level. We have over far, 450 people by now, by the way, guys. So that's kind of crazy, you know? We have lots of people in the ladder. Uh, GG, my friend. But we are not done yet, boys. We're going to be playing more and more games, okay? What is this? PC cleaner? No. Hell no. Go for the game number two. And a new opponent. You see the ranking? We are rank 52. He is rank 54. So the game... The launcher is always going to try to match you with a player around your own skill level. But that's not 100% guaranteed because they need to be online too, right? But in a dream world, it will make you to team up with somebody who, is, uh, who has 20, more, 20 points more or less than you. I love this matchmaking, dude. That's the best thing that could happen actually to be for me in 2024. So hopefully, you guys also will give it a shot and play with your friends. Round two, fight. Yeah, Westworld is going to be a long game, I guess, you know? Westworld is a big map, but it's okay. Mordor against, I mean, this matchup sucks for him, dude. Like, it's a really bad matchup for my opponent. By like, playing against Mordor on this map, Oh my god, you know? Good luck with this one, bro. Mordor is a beast on this map, you know? Here we will make like lots of orc pits. Like here we want to have like... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Don't quit, bro. Don't quit. Just play, you know? Put me out of my misery fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm sick, boy, man. I'm sick, man. My throat hurts me so much, you know. But I, I enjoy it, you know, because I haven't played for a long time. My fingers are rusty. More workers. Send one of them to this location. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so that's what you can do with the evil factions. That's a huge advantage over the good factions. Because your workers, they cost only 25, they are the cheapest units in the game by far. And with this, you can, with them you can scout, you can capture settlements, and of course you can also make money and repair structures too. And on top of that, in some situations, it might be also very useful, you can crush ants with them. They have like crazy damage scattered against ants, so when you have nothing to deal with the ants, like no fire or something, the workers might be your best bet. Okay, my eco management was not very good in this game, but we are taking over the whole map, you know, that's very good, I like this one. And when it comes to the lumber mills, the question when to build lumber mills, when to build the slaughterhouses, I think lumber mills are better in most situations, especially when you know that your opponent will not make it to the settlement anytime soon, because especially early game, the lumber mills giving you such a huge bonus, you know. We can't win this, by the way. He has war chunk, but it's okay. You know, giving you the wood bonus, making your structures cheaper, and with this bonus, you can fill up your castle literally in no time. And you can have up to five lumber mills in total for the maximum discount, which is pretty nice, you know? Look at the minimap, boys. That's the power of Mordor on the map. I mean, here's a bit better eco inside the castle, but trust me, that's gonna be changed very soon. Like, our income is going to be so good now. Crush them all. The age of Uruks is over. The age of the Orc has come. Golem can be used for sneaky, you know, things like this. Like, I would like to kill his lumber mill workers, but basically he has zero lumber mills. And, you know, when you... You can use Golem for scouting. You can also put him inside the castle because he's invisible when he's standing still. 
in, in a dream world you will snipe his armory so he will be building armory on this spot and then when it's at zero person golem can one shot it and remember golem only costs balance 150 and he's very fast you know so overall a great investment all right boys we have four orc pits now what i like to do here is because we have like almost the whole map we can try to creep with the orc warriors you know and you can creep with three orcs a war player quite easily actually the way you want to do this is you want to lure the work away from the lair and the other two orc battalions will actually crush the lair and then they will there will be no reproduction of the works and because you crush the lair one of your orcs will hit level two that will make them stronger and they can also deal with the works afterwards but here because we have like four orc pits we can even go with more orcs you know And then the outpost control for Mordor on a map like this is very fun. When you play Mordor, it's horrible when you play against Mordor. Because Mordor will just make more orc pits from the outpost and keep pressuring you from every side of the map. Like Mordor can play this matchup low-key like 6 to 7 orc pits. So Isengard will have no time to deal anything else besides dealing with the orcs your Mordor is going to send to you, you know? If orcs everywhere, like half of the, half of the population is with orcs. Like Mordor is a bit vulnerable at the beginning of the game, but once you get through this rough early game, you will be, especially on a map like this, you will be having so much impact. You know, I mean, he took the bottom side, but it's okay. He has now two Lambrimios under his control, but I'm down. I'm gonna go for a scavenger. I don't really need to think the land in this one. Because this is the fastest way if you want to reach um, darkness. If you picked I, you know? Or you can also reach the fastest way to Balrog this way. So you basically go uh, I into the scavenger, into the colder heart, and then you can rush the Balrog. So this is the most ideal way to reach. Not the best way, maybe. Because in most situations, you also need darkness. And, and also tainted land but I think here we have such a big lead that we can actually afford to do this you know I mean dude we are everywhere so what we can do now is we can save up we normally I would like to go for an ass but we have so much money we can just rush the witch king you know and after the witch king what we can do is we can we have like plenty of options we can go for the catapults combos throws but I think because we have such a huge lead you can also just go for the banners and give every orc the banner upgrade and give them witch king leadership and just go inside the beats you know because the furnaces of isengard are not level three yet and this is just like the best map like this and fangon forest best maps for mordor i think if you play takes the golem yeah my golem died i think maybe my golem sniped something there oh he was creeping this area okay i see you bro yeah we have all the outposts under our control let's go for the banner boom 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 And in the outpost you can also build the furnaces which are tankier compared to the slaughterhouses and also they will give you the steel bonus making your upgrades on your orcs cheaper so you can buy banner for i believe like 200 or something very cheap All the waypoints there okay this put this push should be able, actually able to win us the game i hope so okay beautiful boys are you ready for the orcs looks like meets back on oh my god he war chanted this okay 
I crash my orcs, but it's okay. We can we have more orcs. No? We have more of them, dude. This guy's like, yeah, I dealt with two veterans of orcs, but he doesn't know, boys. He doesn't know what's coming. Look at this. <laughs> ah, this is so crazy. Orcs everywhere. Who, who said that orcs are weak? <laughs> the eat of the time of the orc has come. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. And such a nice people, actually. You know, I like it. Huge sh shout out to my boy Pelagant. Thanks for playing, bro. Yeah, Mordor on Westfold, you know. Oh, even darkness now. Oh. Yeah, boy, you know. I think we can go for one more game. Let's go actually for one more game, shall we? Let's go for the hat-trick. Thank you so much for playing. Appreciate it, guy, my friend. Okay, so let's go for one more search. Boom, boom. And who's gonna be our opponent now? Oh, somebody declined. I mean, we will still find a game. It's pretty easy now. Oh, nice. So one more opponent. And it's gonna be this time. Reveal yourself. Okay, so you can see... The matchmaking is actually pretty fair, you know? I was expanding the search, and I found somebody who is, like, 14 ranks above me. But if I wouldn't expand the search, it will always look for people maximum 20 elo more than me. But obviously, if you've been against somebody who is way more, uh, way, who is ranked way higher than you, you also will get lots of points from them. And three games, right now in Germany, it's like 11 p.m., you know, Saturday, even 11 p.m. Three games against three different players and finding the games was quite easy, you know? Okay, we are again on, we are again on the map Westworld. Westworld it is. And my opponent this time actually pre-picking the Rohan faction. Okay. I'm picking always random. And hopefully I will get... I want to play actually evil. I don't want to play Gondor against Rohan. It's pretty boring. Give me... Mordor. Round three. Fight! Okay, I'm down with Isengard. Also very strong faction on this map. But Rohan is also very strong on big maps because Rohan has the chance to produce many many peasants. So let's start with Uruk Pit. Here in this matchup, uh, it's very important for Isengard. You cannot protect both the sides at the same time. That's not possible. You want to choose one side and protect it. In my case, I will choose the top side because I believe it's easy to be protected as the settlement is closer to my Uruk pit. As you can see, the distance... The distance is pretty short, you know? Boom, boom, boom. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Dude, so many nice people, man. I like it. So many nice people. I mean, my opponent is clearly coming from the bottom side. That's kind of good for me. Uh, if you can, you always want to be on the opposite side of the map. So now we will have three settlements in total under our control. And we can protect them easier because they are very close to each other. But if you try to capture every settlement at the same time, you can't protect every single one of them. Where is he? I saw him. I saw him. We will, we will need to use Warchan here, actually. Let's use Warchan to kill them a bit faster and keep producing more and more Uruks. Our money is not looking too hot, as we are talking, but it will look better very soon. Trust me on that one. Keep producing more Uruks. And our goal is to keep the Lambir Mills protected. That's the crucial part. And if, as long as we can do this, we will be always able to keep producing more Uruks 
but also at the same time to keep building more structures inside the castle. So far, so good. Nice. So, I mean, he's bringing more peasants, but it's okay. Again, here I don't mind fighting. I don't need to fight. So I can just. Because I have nothing to protect, right? I want to destroy his settlements. It looks like he took something from me, but it's okay because we took one of his settlements and we have three Lamberimirs untouched, which is very good for us, you know? And giving us so much wood bonus, making structures cheaper, and we can get. To fill our bees way quicker. Again, the same situation, like we played on the map uh, Forts of Eisen. The second war chant, you wanna always group as many Uruks as you can to get lots of stuff done. That's my, you know, recommendation to you. War chant the first on your first Uruk, of course, defend, deal damage. But the second war chant, use it a bit more wisely. Uh, we have crazy eco now as we are talking but here also good factions have lots of uh, tools to actually win the game because there are plenty of creeps on this map westfold the enemy can always get lots of power points too they can easily get to the great company if you play the if they play the gondor faction or in this particular case they can also get very easily to the elven alliance because again plenty of creeps super easy to creep with throw him and in order to deny or at least delay this from happening, you want to creep yourself. And the second war chant is going to be used for exactly this, okay? My, op my opponent has already Rohirrim, but it's totally fine. By the time we got a Rohirrim on the field, we have like almost full base, you know? Urupit level 2, amazing. Keep him busy there. And war chant. Here we will war chant these three Uruks and the Berserker. We lost this one, but it's okay. I don't want to wait now for this other one. Doesn't matter. We don't need the war chant because Berza could deal already so much damage. Now, creeping is very easy with in this situation. Again, the Uruks can beat the Vorks, and your Berza can always destroy the lair itself. You know? Go for the lair. One of them can go to the, go to the goblin lair, and that's how you can easily creep with the Isen Isengard faction. Okay, so now I want to go for the for the Lourdes first. I think Lourdes is a great investment into the late game. Very important hero. Getting him early will make it easier for you to level him up to level 5. You know? I think he's not paying attention. Oh, might lose the row here and there. Oh no, I didn't want to do this actually. Oh my god, I wanted to select the Uruks. Okay, so beautiful. I mean, so far so good, you know. You can also um, make a crossbowman and put him inside the outpost there, just for some greater protection. And creep as much as we can. Again, very important to do this. And you can't really get 100% map control against good Rohan, because your pikes will be countered by his peasants. So having like this much map control against Mordor or against Rohan on this map is already more than enough, trust me that one, okay? So creep this, here's some peasants, let's peel, get some berserker to counter this, get the money and get out. The money, 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 nice. Now we can beat the works into the peasants, okay, beautiful. Now we go for the for the work pit, but I wanna build a tower first at the outpost. Towers are very expensive, but they're also very tanky. Go inside the outpost, my friend, boom, boom, nice. Come on, Lourdes, one more shot. Switch the sword. Go. Okay. So nice, so nice. So. Now I want to go for the work direction. Like works can be used to destroy the settlements which are very far away from us. Again, it's a huge map, so having 
units that can move fast is always great. And also peasants can be trampled by the walk riders. Uh, combos can be trampled by them. But in a one-on-one -on -one against Rohirrim with shields, they have no chance. But it's okay. That's not their goal either. Okay, beautiful. Level 3 lords. Amazing. We have Carnage now. Outpost. Outpost will also block this pathway. So it's going to be hard for him to come from this area. And even if he comes, I will be able to see it coming, as you can see. His shields now. So it's going to be a bit difficult to kill them, but it's okay. They have no bleeds yet, so they don't deal too much damage. I mean, this player actually knows what he's doing. I like it. I like it. Okay. But I think he should be making some more peasants, you know? Like, never stop making peasants. I think money should not be an issue for Rohan because he has so much map control, as we are talking. Always keep producing more peasants. Even if you lose them, it's okay. But you can create constant pressure on your opponent in any matchup. Maybe not against somebody like Rohan or Gondor who have, like, horses. But I didn't have works until now. Okay, we've done outpost. And map control is also not looking too shabby. Get crossbowman. Clear this, clear that. Armor mill here. Good pressure. I think he's gonna come to me very soon. To my base. Ah, he's coming to this location. Okay, night lucky. Okay, he's coming to my base now. Um, hold on. I need more pikemen. Oh, we need to be careful. Don't lose the works. Get over here, lords. What we can do is we can aim on Theodin, okay? Boom. Boom. This one can't reach, but this one maybe. Just keep pressuring uh, Theoden all the time. He's very weak hero, you know, in terms of defense. Yeah, he still didn't got killed. Let's put him inside. And I think we defend it. Oh, did we not? Oh my god, my bad. Okay, maybe that's my bad. I will lose the Uruk pit now. Ah, it's my bad. I could have saved this. I thought he's gonna leave, you know? My bad. But I think we're gonna be killing so many of them in return. Yeah, so many of them. And they're taking over the map. I think it's okay because we have still many, many pikemen al alive on the field. It's pretty decent. And we have so much money too. So, what I like to do here, uh, because we have over 2,000, we can just uh, rush Saruman and go for the armory afterwards. I mean, for the upgrades, you know? Okay. Need to get this to level 2 as soon as possible. Uh, we have this Uruks there. We want to give them banner, you know what I mean? Let's use Carnage. Oh, I'm gonna... I, I don't think I'm gonna save him here. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. At least we got him level 5, though. That's okay. That's okay-ish. Well, not bad. Not bad at all. You can give them banners and they can respawn and they have like two more combos. Like saving saving units in this game is so rewarding. Powering up. Okay, our money is looking phenomenal. We can do so many things at the same time, you know. But losing units is none of these things. Go back. 
Take this, take that. Beautiful. We can bring the pikemen there. We are command points kept though. We can't produce any more units anytime soon. That's very sad. But I think we should be able to protect this outpost now, probably not. Okay, so we destroyed some of the level 3 farms from Rohan. That's pretty crucial to kind of hurt and cut his resource income. A level 3 farms give you so much money and destroying them will make your opponent suffer and poor. And again, he will have to deal with this. He doesn't get to pressure you on your side of the map. So it's like a win-win situation in every single case. Demolish this. Now we can... Maybe go for another outpost. I'm gonna go for the rain and... Okay, let's do this. Let's go like this. Um, we could also go for the siege works in the castle. But I think it's better to go for the siege works at the outpost. Because the siege weapons are not the fastest units in the game. So it's better to have a closer distance to the enemy castle. And that's the case when you purchase or capture an outpost which is close to the enemy castle. He can fight this. He has no heavy armor yet can easily fight this. Now he has armor, but it's a bit too late. So he had blades and we won the fight. You see, he needs um, he needs to have all the upgrades. If he does have all the upgrades though, the Rohirrim will win. But if he's missing one upgrade and you have the whole ability on your walk rider, you will win. Okay, so we have Lourdes, uh, level five. We have Warchant. And what's also the case is we have the freezing rain, that means his leadership will be completely negated. That is a well exposed. Let's take down the well. That's gonna give so many power points. Nice so. Nice so. Okay. Beautiful. Saruman first. Trample time. Let's keep pressuring him, you know? Keep pressuring him. But don't lose the whole battalion. That's very important. Remember, we don't have a war pit anymore, and I really don't want to rebuild it as well. So we have these two battalions. We want to keep them alive as long as we can. For that reason, disengage when you know you can't win the fight. Don't feed. Once Saruman is there, we can actually go inside Eugene's boys. A new power is rising. The victory is at hand. Okay, beautiful. Let's go now. I mean, who now has to... <laughs> oh my god, my pike's feeding there. Oh, my bad. I didn't switch to formation. And he will kill my pikes, but it's okay. It's fine, we have more pikes. More pikes. Pikes all day, all night. Okay, now... I don't think it's gonna be easy for him to defend this. Maybe with the land trample, but I think... I mean, here in this situation, destroying the well is more important than the statue. Because the two leadership is already negated by the freezing rain. Uh, we just used it. Um, but well on the other side is more dangerous. Destroy your, the well first. The statue you can actually ignore when the rain is active. Because enemy has no leadership there. No. Oh, he's targeting my Saruman. Cripple, cripple Theorin. Fireball. Fireball him, dude, please. Steal. And trample into the elves. Trample, 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 trample. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, this is still not looking too bad for us. But my micro with the Saruman was so bad. Holy, it was so bad. But we killed all his horses. Instantly revive him. Instantly. Very important. Kill all his horses. Nice. So, nice. So we killed everything from him. That's amazing. That's a trade I, I'm gladly taking. I mean, it would be better to not lose the Saruman there, but I think it's totally fine. We took down the outpost, we took down the Theodin, we took down all his horses. So, and we only lost Saruman. Only.
Yeah, GG, bro. I mean, you, this guy was actually not doing too bad. I'm being honest with you. Like, a few uh, improvements, and this game would have been way harder. Like, again, peasant spam. I think he didn't spam any, enough peasants. He gave me too much money at the beginning of the game. And he never, he rushed my base also very delayed, in my opinion. But the major mistake is to not spam any peasants. Like keep producing more and more peasants. And keep crushing my thing. And because I sent my Uruk forward to his base, and he was so busy dealing with my Uruks that he never touched my eco at the beginning of the game. You know? Which, by the time he had Rohirrim on the field, because I had untouched eco, I was so rich already. That's why peasants are crucial. And putting pressure on the enemy settlements with the peasants is more important than defending your own settlements. Because remember, your opponent, in this case me, always starting with a Uruk pet. It means we, I have no money in my base. All my money coming from outside the base. But you have money in your base. You have, you have a farm which gives you money and also at the same time it's a barracks. So you don't need as much money at the beginning of the game as much as I do. You know what I mean? By the way, Rohan Towers can be bursted. Watch this. Let's kill the farm first. Watch this now. We can burst down this tower. Watch. Move, move, move. We have 110% damage. And the fire arrow upgraded. Crossbowman can actually kill. Destroy the towers. Nice. Ooh. Come, Saruman, I'm gonna make you faster, Saruman. Run. Speedy Gonzalez to me, my friend. I want Saruman to not miss this victory. Because that's what he wanted at the first place in the film, in the films, you know? That's what that was his goal in the Lord of the Rings, the two towers. That's what he wanted. But he didn't get what he wanted. Now it's time to give him what he wanted. I really really, really wanted, you know? Tell me, what was the song again? Tell me what you really, really want. I'm old, dude. And I'm sick too. I have no voice. But luckily, Saruman, Christopher, Christopher Lee has a voice. I'm gonna steal them all voice. Watch this. Watch this. Can we not make peace, you and I? <laughs> Theodian King. Theodin the Grey. <laughs> if no power, yeah. GG man, pre uh, GG actually, not bad, you know, not bad. I mean, we played three games, 11 p.m. Saturday evening against three people, so it's pretty active with me online arena, and hopefully you also will give it a shot. Just download the launcher. Which you can find in the description down below it's called patch 2.22 launcher download it and then you have the play online button thank you so much for watching guys i hope to see you all in the next video until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys